Hello friends and welcome. Uh, in today's video, we'll be looking at uh, project structure. This is uh, the first video in a series uh, where we're going to be looking at how to design uh, the application that you're looking right on your screen. Uh, some of these videos are available exclusively to members. So if you want to support this channel, consider subscribing uh, to be a member uh, using the link that is on your screen. The link will also be in the description uh, box below. So uh, in today's video, we'll be looking at uh, project structure and the reason why we're doing this is uh, most of the time, you know, when you are creating your application, you're thinking of how you want to structure your, your project. Uh, sometimes uh, because you don't have uh, any architecture to work with, uh, that poses a, a challenge because uh, if, you, if you're working with a complex uh, solution whereby you already have the uh, architecture, uh, that will already inform how you will uh, structure the application. Uh, but in, pro in the process where you're trying to just create a side project or you're just trying to create a project for your portfolio, uh, sometimes you think of how you're going to structure it. Uh, so in this video, we're going to look at that. And the, the, the way we're going to look at this will, will make it easier for you to be able to incorporate any kind of architecture that you want to use uh, later on. Uh, maybe you want to use the layered architecture, the clean architecture. Uh, it will be easier for you to scale uh, to use those architecture. Um, uh, in later in the future. Uh, so we'll be employing the MVVM uh, approach uh, in this project structure. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So now I have Visual Studio already open uh, here. Um, what we're going to do is to create a new project. And that project is going to be a Maui, a Maui hub, .NET Maui hub. Let's call it um, Simple Notes. and then click on next. We're going to use the .NET 8 because it's the one that's currently with the long-term support. Let's create the application. Now, the application is created for us successfully and uh, uh, when, when, we come, when it comes to uh, the structure of your project, uh, we said that we're going to use the MVVM uh, approach and from the word MVVM, we have the model, the view and the view model. Uh, so that suggests to us that we need three folders to start with. Uh, so the first one is going to be the model. The next one will be the view. And then the last one is the view model. So with that, we'll be able to put all our models in folder, the view models in a separate folder and then the views in a separate folder. This is helping us to put uh, different concerns into different uh, folder so that uh, things don't get uh, cluttered together. So uh, for the purpose of this application, the next thing we're going to do is to create some other folders that we will need. And we're trying to structure things in such a way that uh, we're able to scale things up you know, later on in the future and then we have a solution uh, that looks uh, well, that is, that is tidy. So uh, one of the folders that I always like to create is the controls folder and this controls folder was going to house all the uh, custom controls uh, that we'll be creating uh, in the course of this application the next folder is the common folder so i'm i'm calling it common because uh we can call it general i don't want to use the word general uh so i'm using the word common and what will be here will be things uh, that are you know general to the application it doesn't really have a category so you're going to just call them common and put uh, those stuffs in here. Uh, things that are around, you know, bootstrapping the application, the startup uh, and, and other things um, that you may need. It's going to come into this folder. So this is how I usually structure uh, some of the projects that I, I work on, especially when I don't really have a specific architecture that I'm working with. And the, ne the next uh, folder we're going to be needing is the converters. Uh, so most of the time, uh, we're going to work with converters in your application. Uh, if you don't work with converters, you may not need this, but I tend to work with uh, different converters. Uh, so, and for the purpose of this application, we're going to work with, with converters. So we need a folder to, to tidy things up. The next folder that we're going to create uh, is going to be uh, the data folder. Normally, uh, your, data, your data is supposed to be in a different layer, uh, but for the purpose of this application, we're just going to put it in the same uh, solution, in same projects here uh just to make things very simple uh, however if, if you want to if you want to have a clean architecture most of the time you, this the, the data is going to be extracted out 
and going to be on, the, on a different layer uh, on its own. So uh, those are the folders that we will be using uh, for this application. Now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, to look at the fonts that we're going to use for this application. So go to resources fonts and looking at it, we already have two fonts uh, file that are already here. So that is the open sans regular and the uh, semi bold, uh, open sans semi bold. Uh, however, in this application, I'll be making use of um, the light font. So it's still the open sans font. So I'm going to bring in the light font. So I ha already have it on my system. Uh, so I'm going to do is to paste that right in here. So we have the open sans light. And for us to be able to use this uh, font, we need to go to the uh, Maui dot. We need to go to the Maui dot uh, Maui program dot CS, and then uh, we will have the fonts at this point. So we have the open sans. We call it light. And normally, I'm supposed to also change this to say open sans light. However, uh, because I'm not using more than uh, one font family here, it's just the Open Sans uh, font family. Uh, what I would do is to change the name uh, here. So I'm going to say this is going to be regular, this will be semi bold, and then this will be uh, light. So anytime I want to use the font, I just say font family equals regular, font family equals semi bold, font family equals light. So with that, it's going to pick up the appropriate font uh right here uh, you can decide to use any alias that you want here uh, as it suits you just make sure that that is the name that you're going to reference in your xaml or in your in your code now the next thing we're going to do is to look at the images that we're going to need uh, i'm going to delete the dotnet bot that we have here and i'm going to import some of the, all the images that we need uh i'm going to paste them in here so these are some of the images that we're going to be using in this application all right so now this this project is is uh it's getting structured as you can see look at the folder and look at how clean uh the folder hierarchy is so uh before we wrap up this um video i'm going to do uh some things the first thing is uh in the common i want to create a class and the class is going to be called the startup uh, class. Now, the purpose of this startup class is to it is to house uh, some of the things that we're going to need uh, at the startup of the application. So this is going to be a static class. And one of the things that I I want to I want to hold in uh, in this class is the service provider. So I'm going to have a property here. So just say. Uh, public static high service provider service provider as this and then what i would do is from the maui program uh, dot cs just right before we um return the builder i'm going to say start up start up dot service provider equals builder dot services dot build service provider so with this we're going to have uh, the service provider um, being handled here so for one reason so this is giving me uh, so this is supposed to be a public set not private set so with that we're able to set it out uh, set it from here all right so this is this is uh, done and then uh, lastly, uh, as a matter of uh, running up, we're going to have uh, the base V model here. So let's say base V model. Now, I always try, to, I always want to use a base V model uh, so that I can hear certain things that are common to all the V model that I use. One of it is uh, the inheriting the I notify property change. So I can do something like everything the high notify property change and then I will, I will implement the the property change but in this case i'm not going to be using the high notify property change uh what we'll be using is um, the 
we're going to be using the observable objects that comes uh, with the, the community toolkit uh, .mvvm. So what we're going to do is to install the community toolkit .mvvm. So we right click, go to manage nuget packages, and then we're going to search for the call community to kit.mvvm and uh, that's it right here you can see uh, community.mvvm by microsoft so i'm going to install the latest stable version apply and then accept uh, the license now this is all right this is now installed uh in our application and for us to be able to use this i have just closed the readme uh, for us to be able to use this we need to go back to uh, the maui program uh, dot cs and then uh somewhere here i think after the use maui um, application we can say dot use use maui community toolkit use maui maui call community two kits and then I'm gonna uh, resolve the namespace if I type it correctly I should be able to resolve the namespace um, think Maui community two kits uh, let's see if this is installed correctly uh, packages community to uh, oh this is the MV, dot mvvm okay so uh, we will not be needing this uh, it will that is actually for the uh, community to kit dot maui uh, so for this once it's installed uh, you don't need to do anything in the maui dot cs uh, apologies for that uh, so uh, if, though we will be needing uh, that soon so let's just uh, as well uh install that so let's install the other package uh, manage the get package and then we search for the community toolkit so we find the uh community toolkit dot maui so this is it uh, from microsoft we're going to install this apply and then accept the license so yeah here is where we have the you can see we need to um, have this line of code to initialize the, the toolkit so this is it and then we're going to try to resolve the namespace and then i'm able to resolve the namespace all right so now we have the maui uh, community toolkit and then we have the community toolkit dot uh installed and uh what we need to need to do is to come to our base view model and inherit the observable object. Observable object. You can see this is coming from the community toolkit.mvvm.component model. So uh, with this, every view model that inherits the base view model automatically inherits uh, this um, observable object. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. Uh, we've been able to uh, structure the project. I hope you've learned uh, one or two things. Uh, in the next video, we'll be looking at how to uh, work with the staggered list. Uh, like I said, most of this video will be available exclusively to members. So if you want to support this channel, uh, consider being, becoming a member by going to the link that is on your screen or use the link that is in the description uh, below. Until then, I'll see you later.